subject of distributed system. So we are going to discuss the topics of this definition relation to the computer system components and what is the motivation for the distributed system. What is the motivation means here it is what is the need for the distributed system. So before you have before making familiar with the definition of the distributed system, first you have an aware of what is the need for the distributed system. So distributed system which is able to um, communicate between the systems which was connected over the communication networks. A communication network may be either through a LAN or through a WAN. So this is used to identify the underutilized resources and that resources can be efficiently utilized. So basically it is a resource sharing, it is, it is meant for resource sharing. So that is the ultimate aim for the distributed system. So let's go for the definition. The autonomous processes which is communicating over a communication network. So this is a simple definition. So the, from the word autonomous you can identify that it is an independent processor. And the independent processor which is communicating over a communication network. The communication network either through a LAN or through a WAN. So from the basic definition we can understand that it is not only connected within a small region. It is also able to communicate the interconnected computers over a wide area networks. So through the uh, wide area networks, so with the uh, things, the systems which are placed in various geographical locations able to communicate with each other through a communication network. So the basic characteristics of distributed system, uh, these are the basic characteristics of distributed system. We are going to list the basic characteristics. The first one is no common physical clock. So what is meant by no common physical clock? So here it is meant that, so you cannot say that the processor have, does not have any physical clock. Here the, each processor which is connected over a communication network has its own physical clock. But the thing is, the entire communication does not have any common physical clock. There is no global clock. So how the base, the important thing here it is have to understand that, so we need to synchronize their operations. So that, that will be a big question mark, how we are going to synchronize their operations since we does not have a common physical clock. The next thing, next important characteristics is it does not have any shared memory. So each processor have its own memory. So the shared memory concept, in shared memory concept, every processor which is connected over the, communi which is connected the, over the commun communication network, it, it, it will share its memory. It will share its memory and each processor have its own cache memory. But here it is meant that there is no shared memory concept. So each processor have its own individual memory. So through this characteristics we are able to identify that the communication is not through the shared memory. So communication is through the message passing primitives, MPA we call it as MPA message processing primitives. The next third characteristics is it is, it is geographically separated. So the processor which was geographically separated and it is able to communicate over the communication networks it forms as a distributed system so different geographical the, the processor which will be in different geographical uh, location we able to access that resources efficiently the last fourth characteristics is it is autonomy it is independent so it is independent which means that it have it it may take its own decision so that is we called as autonomy and heterogeneity so the processes are loosely coupled and and be called as autonomous and another thing is heterogeneity is meant for each processor will have different operating systems and different processes. So here it means heterogeneity. So the distributed system is a combination of the heterogeneity processes and autonomy processes. That is autonomy processes means it is loosely coupled and heterogeneity processor means every processor have its own uh, the, ha the hardware and then the software or independent the different operating system and different uh, hardware it process so these are the uh, four characteristics of the distributed system but the first one is no common physical clock second one is no shared memory third one is uh, geographically separated and the fourth one is autonomy and then heterogeneity the other way we can define the distributed system is a component in which the components located at different networks communicate and coordinate their actions only by passing messages so we are already familiar with the definition, previous definition. The communication is only through the communication network and there is no shared memory concept. So the message will be passed through the message passing. We call it as MPA message passing primitives interface, MPA message passing uh, interface. 
So another definition is a distributed system is a collection of independent computers, are, but it appears to the user as a single coherent system. So what it means is the applications was distributed in different systems, but for the but for the users it appeared as a single coherent system. So that will be appear the user as a single coherent system. It's a collection of independent computers. So we can go with an example. For example. We are going to have a calculation. We are going to have a weather uh, weather weather prediction. In that case, the weather the processor which will be placed in geo different geographical locations able to calculate able to predict the weather in the particular locations. So the in informations will be connected in a particular processor, and that will be communicated to the another processor to have a prediction to make a prediction. So it's a, it basically deals with uh, big data. The data data is also lost. And also, calculation is uh, calculation is also um, large. So we can utilize the systems. We can able to find out the resources which is different geographical location and able to utilize the system efficiently. The next the features and consequences in distributed system that is concurrency. Concurrency means at a time it able to execute multiple process. And uh, already we have discussed the global clock, no global clock. And the third one is independent failures. From the word autonomy, we able to identify that every process have its own own independent it is a considered as an independent system and if the failure of one system in the distributed system will not affect the entire system that is called as independent failures and we already discussed the autonomy and then heterogeneity and if you go for the disadvantage of distributed system the software it is difficult to develop there is no separate software for the distributed system so only through an uh, providing by an abstraction layer the middleware layer is able to handle this and um, the next problem is issues is network. The network which leads to saturation. At one point, the uploading and downloading will be large amount of data will be uploading and downloading. It leads to large latency and transmission uh, performance will also be less. In such case, the network will leads to a saturation. So it leads to loss of transmission. So these are the disadvantages of the distributed system. The other disadvantage is security. Since the data has been placed in different geographical location and the concept of replication, it is easy access of secret data and the absence of global clock, we are already familiar with this. So this is the basic distributed model. Here you can see that every processor which have its own memory and is connected over a communication network, either it is a LAN or WAN. Okay. So here we are the, the the memory the processor has been connected over a, a, a communication network through using a LAN or WAN. So in this case we have to uh, we have to find out that the processor will have an execution time every processor will have an execution time which is indicates as a ti and the processor execution time is very small when compared to the processor communication time so the communication time means it meant for the communication between one process to in another process the result will be transferred from one process to another process so the communication time will be larger when compared to the execution time since it is placed on the different geographical location not only that if the same if the if a rack in a single rank we having a uh, database system and it produce an out, the uh, one system which the one process which produce the output and that has to be communicated to a another process which is placed in the same rack so that transmission time is will also be large than the execution time and if you go for the transmission of the data which is placed in an process which is placed in an another rack it takes some more other uh, large amount of transmission time than the previous one previous case so the execution time is lesser than the transmission time the next we are going to discuss about the relation between the computer software and hardware so here this is looked as a um, layered architecture so we having a network layer and above which we having an operating system in, in traditional system, above the operating system, we will able to run an applications. So the applications which will be able to run on the operating system. So here we are going to run a distributed application. We are not going to design an application for a distributed system. We are going to, the application which is already designed, the complex applications will be divided into subtasks and is placed on the different processor. And it provides the abstraction through the distributed software that we called as middleware. So the middleware layer which provides the abstraction which uh, that is it looks the user as a single we already discussed that it looks the user as a single coherent system.
so through which the middleware layer which provides an abstraction to the user the, uh, that is the application is not running on different system which is placed on different geographical location it looks as the system which is running the application which is running on a single system so that's the look it creates using the middleware layers so next we are going to discuss uh, in relation to the computer system components so every uh, every process in the distributed system consists of uh, consists of a cpu and a local memory and communication only between the process to the communication network through the message passing and there is no common memory we already discussed and the middleware layer which provides an abstraction it reduces the complexity uh, of the architecture the complex problem it divided into sub tasks and able to run on different systems and it has a memory processing unit and is connected over a lan or wan and we discussed that the uh, distributed system or asynchronous why we say that asynchronous means it has no, does not have global clock so it does not have a common clock and there is no impose any bound on relative processes so that is thing and middleware which allows the single integrated computing uh, facility and ds we have a many number of possible uh, configurations able to support mainframes personal computers workstations mini computers so the, uh, the distributed system processor which may be either mainframe personal computer workstation or mini frame computers and is connected over local lan or wan if it is geographically distributed the motivation for the distributed system so the main motivation for the distributed system is the first thing is it is inherently distributed computation which is meant that it is placed in different geographical location the application which is running on a different geographical location and it is connected over the communication network through a lan or wan and other ultimate aim is resource sharing so this is used to find out the underutilized resources and that can be able to utilize that available resources in an efficient way so that is the ultimate aim for the resource sharing in the distributed system and the third thing is we can able to access to the resources which are placed in a remote location
integrity, fault tolerance, scalability, modularity and then incremental expandability. So the other motivations we have discussed the cost uh, ratio, performance cost ratio, the economics, the cost effective way to increase the performance, speed, it increases the computing power because we can utilize the underutilized systems. So we have um, uh, there are some, uh, some supercomputers which was uh, underutilized, we are able to find out the resources and that can be utilized. And resource sharing, we can share the peripherals, data sets, databases, special libraries. Um, this is to avoid the bottlenecks uh, for sharing, uh, if, if you go for sharing of resources. And inherently distributed, it is inherently placed in different geographical location. And reliability, we can ensure that um, the hand, we are able to handle the system crash, even able to survive. What's the need for the distributed system? Resource, uh, the motiv main motivation of distributed system is resource sharing. And resources, either it may be a hardware or it's not. It's not meant as a software, it also meant as a hardware. We can have a different processes. And uh, for example, we have a supercomputer and the supercomputer which is placed in one location and it does not have a, um, it does not reach the um, performance of the supercomputers. It is underutilized, able to utilize that system. And the requirements, we already discussed the fault tolerance, the failure in the distributed system are partial. And component fail will be, if there is a component fail, still the function able to continue its process. And we have to ensure the consistency of the data. And the security is a big issue because in distributed system, the data has been replicated and placed on different geographical location in different processes. So we have to ensure the security of the data and we have to ensure the reliability. So these are the topics we have discussed uh, under the motivation and we have to focus on resource sharing. If it is a hardware means we go for a CPU, that is a, it is a computing server, remote object server or womb server, womb program and memory means cache memory is widely used for fast access, disk file server, virtual disk server and screen. It is used to update the content of the windows so, and printers we able to um, execute the jobs. Uh, and then software resources means it may be a web pages, it is shared by multiple users as a read only and then enable multiple clients to read and write the files if it is a file system and if it is a database intended to record the definitive set of some related data and they able to update the news group contents in the net so we can read and make uh, copies of the poster news. So these are the ultimate aim of the distributed system. So before ending the lecture, we can have a recall of that. What are all the things we have we have discussed in the distributed system? So the basic definition we indicate we meant that it is an independent system processor communicate over a communication network. And the important characteristics we have discussed: no common physical block, no shared memory, geographically separated autonomy and then heterogeneity. So these are the basic characteristics of the distributed system. So in this, if there is no common clock, we have, it indicates that it has the physical clock, but it does not have, the entire system does not have a common clock. So it is, as in, we have to, perform, we, in this case, every processor has to communicate with each other to make a synchronization in the entire communication network. And no shared memory, the communication only through the communication network through the message passing and the geographically distributed component, it is autonomy and it supports the heterogeneity systems. And these are the features and consequences, concurrency, no global clock, independent failure, autonomy and heterogeneity. And the distributed model, we have here in this point, we have discussed that the execution time is negligible when compared to the transmission time so that because it is connected over a communication network and there is no shared memory the shared memory concept arises means the transmission time is very less because it able to share its it able to write and read its operations through the shared memory so it will the execution the transmission time is very less but here the case is the data has to be transmitted from one process to another process through the network so it, in, it includes the network transmission time so the execution time is very lesser than the transmission time and here we have discussed about the middleware layer the middleware layer provides an abstraction thus that is it is it shows the user that is the application which is running on a single system it's not distributed and the middleware layer which provides the abstraction for the distributor systems so we have this another important thing we have discussed that it is asynchronous so it is Synchronous, it does not have a common clock, it is synchronous through a message passing in the network. And these are the various uh, points we have discussed under the motivation, what is the need for the motivation of the distributed system, why we go for the distributed systems. 
and these are the points we are discussed in the distributed systems and what are the hardware resources or shared and software resources or shared in the distributed system so these are the uh, topics we have discussed under the um, relation to the components in the computer system and ultimate aim for the distributed system so once again thank you